All right, guys. So this sermon is going to be a little, a little different. Uh, the name of it is going to be called Don't Buy the Lie. Don't Buy the Lie. Um, this particular sermon, uh, I hope people of all ages hear it, but it's specifically for some people of the older uh, generations. And I want this sermon to encourage people uh, of the older generation, specifically people who are in the closet, but you're not a young person. You're older, you're in the closet, you've spent your life in the closet, and maybe you've wanted to come out, maybe recently or in recent years you've considered coming out, but, but you almost don't want to. Because there's still a little bit of fear there because you know how things may have been for you in the past growing up. And so now you're looking at these younger people in the LGBT community who you see them, you see them on TV, you see them uh, live out in person, being themselves, having a great time, loving who they love, living life up. And maybe you look back and you think, well, you know, it wouldn't have been so easy for me to be out of the closet back when I was young. And I feel kind of like I've missed out. I've missed out on some fun times. I've really missed out. And maybe you feel like, you know, this is really unfair to me and people of my age, people of my generation, because we didn't get to have that. And I'm here to let you know in this particular message to not really look at it that way. Don't look at it so much as, you know, I regret not coming out in the past or a lot of my good years have left me and, and now my time to have fun is over. You know, now my opportunity is up. No, it's not. It's not. You have bought into a lie, whether it's a lie someone else said or a lie that maybe you've told yourself. And the lie is that your time is up when really your time is now. What better time, what greater time to be yourself? You're not too old to be yourself. You're not. And maybe, just maybe, God can use you in a way that you never would have imagined. Maybe he can, maybe this is actually the perfect time for him to use you and people like you because maybe people your age need to see that you've been around this whole time. People like you've been around, but you've, you felt like you had to be hidden and now you can be you, but you can also show that you're you and do it with eloquence, do it with dignity, do it with self-respect. What do I mean? Well, let me ask you this for you older people that maybe you, you, you're, you're trapped in the closet. You're not quite all the way out yet, even though you kind of want to, you know, tip your foot over that line. Let me ask you this. Do you ever look at some of the younger people in the LGBT community and you look at some of the things that they do, some of the things that they say, some of the ways that they act. And do you ever say to yourself or even out loud, you know, I, I don't really like how some of these younger people are making the community look, you know, you may say, yeah, you know, I, 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 I you know, I see myself in them, you know, I see the fun they have and that's cool enough, but maybe there's some things that they, that they do or say that, that, you know, you kind of feel like, you know, it, 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 it might make us look bad as a whole. And you think, you know, I, I can portray the community better than this. Maybe that's all the more reason why you should come out and just be yourself because maybe they need to see some of the older people do certain things in a more, I don't know, professional manner, if that's the word you want to use, a more mature manner. Maybe that's the best way to put it. Maybe they need to see some people really live it up, but in a very mature way. So, so you know, maybe, maybe you've been looking at things all wrong. Maybe this is the perfect time. 
and and you've got some experience that that these younger people have you 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 know you've heard some things and you've seen some things that they haven't ha seen or heard and you may have gone through some things that they haven't that that gives you that experience that 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 shows that you know how to go about things the right way so let's get into this if you're following along in scripture three places Joel first Samuel and Matthew Joel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and Matthew chapter 4. I've been in, in 1 Samuel quite a bit these past couple of months, and I think Matthew quite a few times as well. I don't know. But anyway, so as you're getting there, if you're following along in Scripture, as you're getting there, I want to read something to you. It's something that I posted on Facebook just the other day. And I want to share this because I feel like this is just absolutely spot on for this sermon. Let's see here. Oh yeah, here we go. So this is what I put. Give me just a second here. I put this. If you or anyone you know feels like they are too old to come out of the closet, which is really just another way of saying I'm too old to be myself. Please read and share this. Now, let me pause and say this real quick. Let me say there are going to be, and I apologize up front, there are going to be a few um, no-no words <laughs> in, in this, but it's not me talking. It's just me quoting things similar to to what others have said to what i've heard others say and you'll hear that as i read this it'll be you know me speaking as someone else so just just bear with me i know this is a little different as i said before it's a little unusual but i wanted to be raw and real in this because this is something that is is a real serious matter that people belittle. It's something that's swept under the work, under the rug. Older people being trapped in the closet, wanting to come out, feeling like they've they've missed out. This is something that really needs to be dealt with, and we need to be real with it. It's you know, it's it's a it's a serious thing. It's something that we are just not taking serious and just you know acting like this issue really doesn't even exist. So let me continue. This is what I put. Oftentimes, we hear people of older generations start off sentences with, well, back in my day, and then they go on to compare how things were back when they were in their youth with something in the world that is different today. And one of the many topics they may discuss is how the LGBT community has become less silent and less hidden over the years. For example, a person may calmly say, back in my day, being gay just wasn't as socially acceptable as it is today. And usually, they mean exactly what they said. They're not trying to be rude or negative, they're just trying to tell it how it is. On the other hand, you may have a person that very angrily says something like, back in my day, them damn queers had to stay in the closet. They would have gotten their ass beat if they had tried to come out. They weren't out here parading themselves around and trying to be out in the open like everybody else the way they do nowadays. It's stupid and I don't want to be around those type of folks. I don't want nothing to do with them. Now, if we hear a person speak in this manner, we're quick to assume that they are prejudiced against gays and will quickly label them as homophobic. And this could be true about the person. However, that angry person may not hate gays at all. They probably hate th his or herself. They may despise who they truly are because that's what they've been taught to do. And truth be told, what he or she may really be wanting to say is, back in my day, I wasn't allowed to be out of the closet. I couldn't be myself at all. I've spent all these years pretending to be somebody I'm not, pretending, pretending to be in love with people I wasn't really in love with, 
and missing out on true love because I was scared of getting my ass beat. And now I got to watch all these young folks be out and proud and have all the fun that I didn't get to have in my youth. And that, and I'm, and I'm just supposed to sit back and be okay with that. That just pisses me off and I don't want any part of it. Listen to whoever may need to hear this. No, you are not too old to come out of the closet. You are not too old to dress how you want to dress. You are not too old to love who you want to love. You are not too old to live how you want to live. And you are not too old to say what you've got to say in order to tell your story. Simply put, you're not too old to express yourself. Others may have told you that you're too old for that mess. You may even tell yourself that you're too old every time you look in the mirror, but it's a lie that you've bought into. Don't buy the lie. You are not too old to be yourself. One of my favorite Bible verses is Joel chapter two, verse 25, which says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. My point is, don't focus so much on the years of your youth that you feel were lost or stolen from you by those who wouldn't accept you for who you really are, Perhaps God wants to restore to you those years that were eaten up by your enemies, regardless of if your peers were your enemies or if you were your own worst enemy because of your fears and self-hatred. God is a restorer. Be blessed. It's your time to shine. And that's the end of my Facebook post. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so I, I really felt like that was something special to share that really sums up a lot of what I could say. Guys, listen, what better time than now? What greater time than now? You look and say, well, this is the best time to be out and proud. And now this is for these young people. No, it's for everybody. What better time than now? What better time to feel young and youthful than now? Regardless of your age, this is your moment to do it. But to do it in such a eloquence and such a grace and such a maturity. You know, you can really make us as a community look good based off of how you go about this. I mean, you, you know, this is your time to really rock, man or woman, you know, hey, so just something to consider. So I said the first scripture was Joel 2, which I just, I just read it in the post. It was Joel chapter 2, verse 25, and I'll read it again. It just simply says this. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent amongst you. You know, God can restore those years. You know, the things that you could have done, you could do them now, but God can set it up in such a way that, that you, you feel young again. You feel like, you know, opportunities that you may have lost have suddenly reappeared or maybe you suddenly have new opportunities to do new things that that you never would have thought you would have had the chance to do i mean you know there's there's so much goodness <laughs> in god there's such a grace he's he's a restorer of, of time and years and he can do that because god listen the god that we serve is not bound by time he's the creator of all so, so time, this concept of time is something that we have because of him, because he's outside of time. He's not bound by it. You know, a year is, is as a thousand days for him and a thousand days is as a year. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> he, he has a way of doing what, what we 
can't do. You know, we we're the ones that hope for, you know, the the creation of a time machine, you know, in the future with the advancement of technology. And God is just like, hey, I'm, I'm totally outside of this. You know, I can I can bend and manipulate time. Like, what, what do you even mean? So. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. But let's move on to first Samuel chapter 17. This is definitely not going to be a long sermon. I'm already like probably past the halfway mark. I mean, it's, it's not long at all. First Samuel chapter 17. <clears throat> Starting at verse 32. It's just 32 and 33 we'll look at. It says this. It says, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. We know this story. This is the story of David and Goliath. We've heard this so many times. We have God's people, the Israelites. We have their main rivals, the Philistines. They're always going at it. And in this particular story, the Philistines come on the scene with a very huge man, a giant, whose name is Goliath. He's a champion fighter. He's huge. He's super strong. He's walking around with, with armor and with weapons and a shield that's just heavy and and huge compared to any you know any other armor or weaponry that anybody else has because he's that big and strong enough to carry it i mean all the 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 armor and stuff is impressive enough as it is but just seeing this big tall massive champion fighter wearing all this stuff it's just blowing everybody's mind i mean he's even got a his own you know I guess armor bearer, if you will, carrying this big old shield for him because he's just so big (laughs) with all this probably unnecessary paraphernalia he's carrying around. But he but he's got to show it. He's got to show it off. He's got to show everybody just how big and tough and extreme and strong he is. So God's people, they're trembling in their boots. They don't know what to think. They were fighting with all this faith before, knowing that God was backing them up in their battles. But because they see Goliath, because they are going by sight instead of faith, when they should be going by faith instead of sight, they freak out. They're afraid. They're dismayed. They don't know what to do. But David... The shepherd boy, David, the young boy, David, comes on the scene and he sees Goliath and he sees the situation. He sees that people are afraid to stand up to him because Goliath has issued out this challenge to God's people. He said, hey, if if any of y'all, you know, instead of having this all out war, I, I stand out from in front of all the other Philistines, and I I put out a challenge, and I challenge any one of you, I want any one of you to come up and battle me one on one. And if you can beat me, you got us. But if we, if 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 I take out you and we end up beating you guys, then 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 you guys belong to us. And so he's issued out this challenge, and he's been out there for days, just talking trash. Nobody wants to fight him. But David comes on the scene. He sees the scenario, and even though he sees how big Goliath is. He is remembering what everybody else in God's camp forgot, which is they're God's camp. They're God's people. They've got God's favor. That's how they've been winning these battles. David is is realizing something that, that everybody else has forgotten because of fear. He's saying, hey, I got this. Let's go. You know, I'll, I'll take them on. And so that's what this conversation is in verses 32 and 33. David is saying, listen, I got this. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll fight with this Philistine. But Saul is saying in 33, listen, you can't do this because you are but a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. In other words, you're very young. Goliath isn't, but he's been doing what you're trying to do now. Since he was young. So what is Saul saying? He's saying, he's saying, listen, 
yeah, he's 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 big and he's strong and this and that. But other than that, other than just that, he also has experience on you. He's been through this a lot. In other words, he's saying, listen, it's like he's saying, this ain't his first rodeo. <laughs> you know, Goliath has, he's, he's been in this game for a while. He's been around the block. He's not new to this. He has a lot of experience from his youth up that you don't have because you're just a youth. And so what I'm saying to you is this. And, and we know how the story plays out. We know David ends up defeating Goliath. But here's the thing. He he defeats Goliath not because he's strong. David's not anywhere near as strong as Goliath or big as Goliath. He doesn't have the experience. But he defeats him because of his faith in God. God gives him the victory. Because all David does is use a slingshot to, to throw a stone at Goliath. It says in Scripture that the stone sunk into his head. And instead of Goliath falling backwards, which would have made sense, scientifically speaking, he fell forward. Because he didn't get hit in the back of the head, he got hit from the front. But instead of going back, which, is, which the driving force would have driven him back and down, instead he went forward and fell down. Fell to his knees. Why? Fell to his face. Why? Because that was God bringing him down, bringing him forward. Bring him to his knees or bringing him down to his face the way God's people would in worship. God, God's people, that's what we would do in reverence to God. So he's, Goliath has spent all this time talking trash to God and now he is forced into a position where he's, it's, it's as if he's having to give God some reverence. Because it wasn't until David went and got the sword and cut his head off that it was even officially over. So he, Goliath was just in a position where he looks like he's having to, he, he appears like he's in a position of repentance almost. Like he's having to, to give God reverence. And it's similar to a different story in the Bible when uh, the Philistines go and they get... Uh, I believe it was I believe it was like the Ark of, of the Covenant or something, and they brought it into the temple of Dagon, and Dagon was one of their false gods that they worshipped, and they brought the, the Ark into that temple of worship. They set the Ark of God in front of the statue of Dagon. Y'all remember the story? And they left, and when they came back the next day, the statue was down in front of the ark of God as if the statue was like down in a position, in a prostate position, worshiping that statue. And then they raised it up, right? And then they left and they came back again. And, and the statue was right back down in that same position. It's, it's, it's almost similar to that. You know, it makes me think of that. But anyway, but back to this. So my point is God was behind David's victory. It wasn't his strength. It wasn't any experience. And, and that's awesome. That's how it should be. But I'm, I'm using this to make a point, and the point is this. If not for the favor that David had with God, if he didn't have faith, the faith in God, and he was just trying to go out there by his own strength and might trying to show off, do you think David would have won? Let's be honest, probably not. We, we want to say he would because we love David. You know, David's a biblical hero. But realistically speaking, if not for the, 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 the favor of God, if not for God's grace, his amazing grace, he would not have won the battle. He wouldn't. Just, just keeping it real. Goliath had the size, the strength, the power. He had everything going for him, and he had the experience. David had the most important thing, though, which was God. So what am I saying here? You, whoever needs this word, it's almost like you are a good Goliath. You're a good Goliath. You're not against God, God's people. You're on God's side. And... You are the one that has the faith. In other words, imagine this story playing out different. Imagine David not having that favor with God, which would lead him to not win. And already you would have the victory because of the experience, right? Because you're older. You've, you've been through some things. You're well seasoned. But you're not just someone who has experience and power. 
but you have the faith. That's what I'm saying. It's like you being a good Goliath, but you're at a point now where instead of just trying to figure out how to do this in your own strength and how to do this in your own experience, which you have, now you're saying, okay, God, I'm going to put this in your hands. Show me how you want to use me being who you created me to be. That actually would have been another good title for this sermon. And instead of just don't buy the lie, another good title would have been The Good Goliath. That, that sounds kind of like a good action movie too. The Good Goliath. Anyway. <laughs> but but that's kind of like what you are. You're the good Goliath. You've got the, the, the power and the strength. You've got the experience because you're older. But but you're you're on the winning team. You've got the faith in God now. You're putting it in God's hands. So now you, you really have no choice but to win the battle. Because it's really God winning it for you. It's him going before you and making the way before you. So you you've got the you got you've got the experience, you've got, you know, you've got the upper hand, you've got some wisdom. But now comes the point where you say, okay, God, I want to put my fears aside. I, 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 I want to put this, this self-hatred aside. I want to put all these things in me that, that is not even of you. I want this out of me, you know. You know, this, this, this fearfulness is not from you. You know, the scripture lets us know that God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And maybe that's where you're at. You you want a sound mind. You just, you know, you, you're ready to be at peace with all this. You're ready to just be yourself and just move on and just live your best life. As the young people say, you, you can live your best life too. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's time for you to live your best life. The, the, the years of, of doubt and, and, and self-hatred and anger and fear. And worry, all that can be behind you now. You just got to get to that point where you, you really pray and talk to God about it and just be real and be like, listen, I put this in your hands now. I'm ready to be who you've created me to be. Give me, give me purpose. Give me new purpose or show me a purpose that you've already had for me that I haven't even walked into yet. So see what kind of doors open up for you see what happens see what changes happens in your life Matthew chapter 4 and this will be it Matthew chapter 4 starting at verse 18 it says this and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Jesus, he went around and he got his disciples. And we know we know how this plays out. We, we have Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. We see that on my shirt. Look at this cool looking... Uh, <laughs> old school Nintendo style shirt that's got like a video game 8-bit Jesus you know <laughs> it says Jesus Christ salvation is only through him you know it's, yeah it's, it's, it's the truth but Jesus the Savior our Savior our Lord and Savior uh, he went and he got 12 men to follow him to watch him and, and he wanted to teach them and they got hands-on experience with Jesus and he showed them the way he showed them not just how to live but how to show others how to live for Christ how to live for God how to be a disciple and make disciples of others and you know just being able to teach people right from wrong when it comes to God's standards, because the world has a standard, but God's standard is highest. So a lot of people, they say, hey, you know, why do I need God? I know right from wrong. I don't need a Bible telling me uh, what's right from wrong. I already know I got common sense. But what people don't realize is the world has a standard, but God's standard is higher. And if you don't have the word and you're not seeking after God and his ways, how do you know what his standard is? The world's standard. 
standard is not good enough for God's standard. And so that's what Jesus was teaching. And so uh, our Savior wants us to know the ways and the standards of God. But anyway, he, he goes and he begins to gather up these men. And he's looking for some things. But if you notice, he's not looking and saying, well, how old or how young are they? He's not trying to find someone just because they're a young whippersnapper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's looking and he's, he's, he's trying to see what's in them. What they are about that, that, that can make them an asset to the kingdom. And he sees that, that these two particular men... Simon and Andrew, they're fishermen, and he goes up to him and he says, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. What was Jesus saying? He was saying, I see that you've got experience in this area right here. I'm going to take what you have experience in and use it for something similar, but something kingdom related. You're good at going after fish. I'm going to cause you to, to take that technique, that experience you have in that, and shift it and gear it towards gathering in people, gathering in a different kind of harvest. You gather this harvest, I want to teach you how to gather that harvest for God. You know, you, you may fish to feed yourself and to feed others, but I want, to, I want you to focus on feeding other people spiritually and you being fed spiritually. So he used something that they understood, something they had experience in, so that, so that they could shift from that and jump right into something else, a similar concept, but for an even greater good. And so I'm saying that to you, listen, don't, don't look at it as you're too old. Look at it as, hey, I got too much experience to go to waste. Maybe God wants to use you and use some of the things, the experiences and the encounters that you've gone through. He, maybe he wants to use you for his glory in a way that you couldn't have imagined. And maybe you can be an example for the younger people that maybe you feel aren't quite doing some things so great in the LGBT community. So these are just some things to consider. You've got wisdom, you've got some knowledge, you've got some understanding, you've got experience under your belt, you've got age under your belt that gives you an advantage. Don't look at it as a disadvantage. Don't look at it as a negative. Don't buy the lie. You're not too old. You're just beginning. With that said, I think I've made enough points. I'm going to pray us out of here. I hope that you enjoyed this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another time to, to minister another word. Lord, I pray that those who would need this word, that they would tune in and hear it. I pray that people of all ages listen, but Lord, I pray that the older folks that, that feel like they've lost time, that they've lost their life, that they've lost years, they've, they've let their youth, some of the best times of their youth slide by. Maybe they feel like so much good time has been wasted doing so many great things and having so much fun. And Lord, I pray that they would hear this and see that that's not the case, Lord, not the case at all. Lord, I pray that uh, people who know people who may need to hear this, hear it, and that they pass it on, that they share it with others. Lord, I pray that even younger people uh, who, who need uh, a different outlook on the older generations and what they have to bring to the table, that they would tune in and hear it as well. Sometimes it's just us. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the younger people need a, a facelift, so to speak. <laughs> sometimes we need a wake-up call. Sometimes we need a, a reality check to see this that we don't we, we got to be teachable we have to be teachable we don't always know it all we don't always have the answers but sometimes you know the older folks they they've got answers they've got wisdom they've got something to impart unto us lord i thank you i give you the praise the glory and the honor in jesus name i pray amen <laughs>